It's called the tangent line. This is a tangent line. What a tangent line is, it's a, you might have remembered this from, uh, from geometry, but a tangent of a circle, right, is a point that exactly touches the circle at one point and, and doesn't go through the circle. That's what a tangent line is, right? What's very important about the tangent line when you get, well, in this class, and when you get to calculus, is that it tells you the rate of change, okay? So it represents, represents the rate of change, rate of change, which is really the slope, right? The rate of change of a function of a function at um, at at a point. Okay, so uh, we're going to do one again where we uh, we go through finding the tangent line at a specific point. But what's really nice is you can come up with the equation of the rate of change, and then you can find the rate of change at any point of a function, which is really a powerful tool. Yes, sir. That is the derivative. Yeah, I guess. Right. Yeah, it's also called the the tangent line, the slope of the tangent line is called the derivative. Okay? The slope, so the tangent line itself isn't called the derivative. The slope of the tangent line, okay? Tangent line is called the derivative. The derivative. Another name for it is the instantaneous rate of change. Instantaneous. Instantaneous rate of change, which is really powerful. Like if you're, uh, like in physics or in engineering or in a lot in uh, what, uh, like dealing with. Uh, like rockets and orbits and all that kind of stuff, that rate of change can represent how fast an object is going at a specific point, if this is distance and time, or it could represent the acceleration that an object is going, if this is velocity over time, and it could represent all kinds of cool things. And, it, and even though I, I've been using parabolas, because that's kind of the more simplest, the simpler case, it applies to all functions. So, so if I have a uh, rational function or an exponential function or any other kind of function, the same principles of how we find it can be applied. Okay. So, um, so I'm going to write something else. New page. Can I move on? Yeah. Move on. Okay. So the so when you're graphing these things, if I were to let me get a solid on. Let's change to black. All right. So here, ooh, that looks good. Um, so here's this, here's this. Here's my, here's my curve again that I drew in the last one, okay? If I cut through this parabola, okay, and I pick two points, okay, like, um, so here's a point here, okay? Here's a point here, and here's a point here. Okay, this is called. Does anyone remember what it's called from geometry when it cuts through a circle? A co well, uh, if it's a line, it's no, not no. It's called something else. It's called a secant secant line. Okay, so this is a secant line. Okay, that's an end. Okay, secant line in comparison to a tangent line. So. What happens, and I kind of showed you this the other day, but as this secant line, as a distance from this point to this, so if I want to find like the rate of change at this specific point right here, I can approximate it with a secant line, but the closer I move this point to this point, right, the closest I get to the actual tangent line. And that's where the limits come in. So the slope of the secant line, slope of the secant line, secant, secant line, secant, yes, you can, is given by this formula. F of x plus h 
minus f of x over h. Okay? Um, f of x plus h minus f of h over, uh, over h. Because h, where h is, uh, let me see if I could draw this, okay? h is, this is h, it's the distance, the x distance from here to here. So basically, what you're finding is, this is the change in y, right? And this is the change in x. Do you guys understand those symbols? Delta means change, okay? The derivative, okay, this derivative, or the slope of the tangent line, derivative, or the slope of the tangent line, slope, of tangent line, tangent line is given by, if you take the limit, right, as h goes to zero of the same thing, of f of x plus h minus f of x over h, right, because, right, as this h gets closer and closer to here, okay, that means h is approaching zero, right? Yeah, f of x, f of x plus h is the y coordinate at this point, okay? f of x is the y coordinate at this point, right? So it's really y2 minus y1 over x, h represents x2 minus x1. Do you understand that? Yeah. So the hard part is plugging into an equation and simplifying it down and doing the algebra. Okay? So, uh, so we're going to find the for find the slope of the graph of. Okay. So can I move on? Okay. Find find the slope slope of the graph. Of f of x or f of x is equal to x squared plus one when x equals one. Okay, so I'm not going to draw the picture yet. I'm going to just do it right here. So all you do is you take the limit as h goes to zero, and then you plug and shove. So of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. h, we don't know what h is, but I can plug in x plus h in here. So x plus h looks like, f of x plus h looks like x plus h squared plus 1. Do you understand what that, where I got that? I took x plus h and I plugged it in for x squared, and then there's a, whoops, there's a plus one here at the end, right? Minus f of x is just the function, right? So minus, I would keep this in parentheses, x squared plus one over, uh, over h, right? I'm gonna take the limit of that as h goes to zero. Now you just have to do a bunch of algebra, uh, which is not too bad, you have to FOIL this. And when you FOIL this, don't forget there's a middle term, right? So it's when I FOIL that, I get x squared. How many xh's do I get? 2 times x times h plus an h squared. There's this plus 1 is still here. Minus, whoops, plus h squared plus 1. I didn't write this plus 1. Minus x squared. I'm going to distribute through this minus sign. Minus 1 over h. I'm taking the limit of this as h goes to 0. Okay? Now some things will disappear. Right? So I can cross out this x squared. With this x squared, things are always going to disappear. This 1 will go away. Right? And now I have the limit as h goes to 0 of 2xh plus h squared over h. Now you see how there's h in, h's in both of those? Yeah. I can pull an h outside. I know I've done this before. The limit 
as h goes to 0 of h times 2x plus h over h. And what always happens, if you did this correctly, is these h's can now be canceled out. Now I have this is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of 2x plus h. And then I plug in uh, what happened? Oh, no. It's OK. I just found the limit when x equals. I just found the limit. This is OK. This is equal to 2x, OK? And what I just found is I found, that's better, actually, OK? I found the general equation of the derivative, OK? Which is really nice, OK? I was going to tell you just to the specific point, but I just found the general equation of the derivative. So not only will this equation here, y equals 2x, not only will it tell you the um, equation at 1, it will, or the slope at 1, it will tell you the slope at any point, OK? y equals 2x, I plug in h is 0, and then h goes away, right? And so I think it, y equals 2x. So at, at, uh, at 1, right? So now the slope at 1, what's the slope at 1? Two. Slope at 1 is equal to 2 times 1, which is 2, two OK? So just to show you what I'm drawing here, OK? Here's my picture y equals x squared plus 1 is a parabola that goes through 1, right? And at the point when x is equal to 1, right, my slope, so this is the point 1, comma 2, right? What's the slope of my line at that point? 2, two right? So here's the tangent line, and the slope of this tangent line is equal to 2. So what? Yes? What? That line go through the origin then? What did? Uh, no, not necessarily. We'll come, we'll come to that in a second, OK? So that slope is equal to 2. What would be the slope at 0? 0. What would be the slope at 0? 0. Plug in 0, what do you get out? 0. Does that make sense? Does it look like the slope is 0 right there? Okay. What would the slope at negative 1 be? Negative 2, right? Does it look like the slope would be negative 2 here? What would be the slope at negative 2? Negative 4. Negative 4. Does it look like it's getting steeper in the negative direction? So isn't that cool? So from that equation, you can tell the slope of the curve at any point, anywhere. Okay? Yes, ma'am. So this might be kind of like really obvious, but I might just be a little bit of time. But why, when you plug in um, x plus h, do you get x plus h squared for the top? Why isn't it just f of x squared plus 1 plus h? Because you square ones over in the parentheses after the Right, because so like f of x plus h, I take x plus h, I put it in there, right? As x. And then plus 1, right? So I'm plugging, here's oh, the formula oh, for f of x, okay, right? Okay, so you put x plus right. h is equal to right. x. It's hard because there's an x in the, like, f of x plus h. Oh, I would be like, if there was, it was f of x plus h, then it would be x squared plus 1 plus h. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I'm going to do another example, right? So this thing has a name. Like I said, this is the... This is the derivative. It's the equation of de derivative. There's a few ways to write it, OK? I said one way is the derivative. Another way is the instantaneous rate of change. Another way is f prime of x. There's all kinds of ways to write the derivative. Another way to write it is dy dx. You'll see different forms. d dy dx. This is the same as sometimes I'll just write y prime, OK? This is the same as d dx of f 
of x, like this. And this is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. All of these things mean exactly the same thing, okay? And depending on y prime, f prime of x, dy dx, which is kind of like delta y over delta x, except it implies the instantaneous rate of change. So delta implies there is actually a change. dy dx means that rate of ch that change is infinitesimally small, teeny, 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 okay? D dx, so just kind of the difference. D dx of f of x says it's kind of like an operator. I'm taking the derivative of this. And this is kind of the limit definition of the derivative. But all of these things mean the same thing. Uh, are we going to use those other ones? Well, no, but you'll just have to use one of them. But just so you're able to recognize it, if it says find this, right. you'll know what they're talking about. Because a lot of times, like, on the AP test, I'll say, find this. Sorry, what is D equal? D, it just means that it's the rate of change of, OK? So rate change of y over rate yeah, of it's, it's, Yeah, it's the, the change in y over the change in x. So the delta y, delta y over delta x means there is an actual distance between the y's and actual distance between x. This means that change is infinitely small. So it's kind of like the instantaneous rate of change. Oh. Okay? Oh, okay. It's kind of, so this is kind of like this. And so that would be like, the one I'm talking would be like. Yeah, if you took the limit of this as h went to 0, then you'd have this. Okay? Yeah? Yes, sir? Um, so going back to what Hannah was saying, but I kind of see why she was confused. Because when you have this, it's good stuff. Okay. In general. To find the slope, this is the general equation of the slope of the tangent line. So this is the equation of the derivative. This is the equation of the tangent line itself at a specific point. Okay? So this is, but this number here I get from this equation over here. You see? Okay, so, so, you have to find the derivative. so you have to find the derivative first. This part should be easy once I know the derivative. Okay, so this is this is good stuff. This is really good. I wouldn't be watching a video right now for being on your cell phone because because uh, this is kind of kind of conceptually you need to concentrate. Okay. Are there going to be a lot of these on the uh, Just like fifteen. No, I don't know. Probably, probably one or two. Um, f of x equals 1 over x. Find the equation of the derivative. Find the equation of, of the derivative. So this is a function that's not a... Uh, it's not a, um, a quadratic function, so it's a little bit different. Because y equals 1 over x, if you remember, it kind of looks like this here and this here. Remember that? Some of you remember that. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to find the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x, whoops, of f of x plus h, f of x plus h minus f of x over h, okay? So this looks like, in this case, it looks a little different, okay? The limit as h goes to 0 of 1 over x plus h, and then you could say, what, after I'm done, okay? Over x over h. Do you guys understand where I got that from? Yep. Okay? I plug in <coughs> x plus h in here, right? Here, this is f of x plus h, right? Because if I get plug x plus h in there, I get this. This is f of x, right? If I plug in, this is f of x, 1 over x. Here's h. Now I'm going to do some simplification. Anyone want to guess what I should do? Find a common denominator, OK? So I'm going to find the limit as h goes to 0 of 
This becomes H minus in parentheses. I mean X, I was right. X, that's right. Minus, I said H, I meant X. X plus H. That whole thing over X times X plus H. That whole thing over H. Okay? And you say, oh my God, that's horrible. It's not that horrible. Watch. Limit as H goes to zero. What happens to my X's? They go away. Okay? So that gives you negative H over X times X plus H. I'm going to copy dot flip this H. So I'm going to bring this H and I'm going to do this. You okay with that? You understand what I did? Yeah. Okay. What happens to those H's? They cancel out and up top I get, so now I get the limit as h goes to 0 of negative 1 over x times x plus h. x plus h, whoops. I say one thing and something else comes out. I don't know. x plus h. When I plug in 0, what do I get? What do I get? Negative 1 over x times x which is negative 1 over x squared. So the general equation is y equals negative yep. 1 over x squared. Yep, this is y prime, or dy dx, or f prime of x. This is the derivative of this function at any point. So let's just try something. Let's say plug in 1. What do I get? Negative 1. Does it look like the slope at 1 is about negative 1? Yes. Yeah? OK. Yeah. Plug in a point like negative 2. What do I get out? What do I get out if I plug in negative 2 in here? Negative 1 fourth. Does it look like if I went to negative 2, the slope of my tangent line would be about negative 1 fourth? Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? I just love this. I just think it's, I just think it's neat. Um, that's, that's, so, uh, so any point, I could find the equation of, or the slope of the curve at any point. Okay? And that's kind of uh, that's kind of all she wrote. Okay, so uh, so you guys can uh, struggle through. That.